Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and this is your weekly hardware news recap. First up for the week, NVIDIA posted their fourth quarter fiscal year 2016 results, earnings, revenue, all of that. And they had record breaking quarters and actually record breaking year earning $1.4 billion per quarter. This is up 12% compared to the previous year's fourth quarter and net income was at 207 million for quarter four 2016. Now again, this is their fiscal year, obviously not the actual year. And that is up 7% from quarter four of their last fiscal year. NVIDIA's GAAP adjusted revenue for the fiscal year of 2016 was a staggering $5.01 billion up 7% from last year and net income was 614 million, which is down 3%, but non-GAAP net income was 929 million, which is up 16% from the fiscal 2015 year. So it just kind of depends on what you're looking at. You can see a chart on the screen with some more information on that. Now, another big news item for the week was Vulcan. So Vulcan is new API, and that is being developed by the Kronos Group, who are working with NVIDIA, AMD, basically anyone relevant, Intel, of course. And they're developing this API to basically compete or at least complement DirectX 12 on non-Windows 10 devices, including Windows 7, 8.1, and 10, of course, and then Linux operating systems are getting Vulkan as well. So we benchmarked Vulkan. If you're subscribing to the channel already, you've seen our benchmarks. And we found that presently with the one game that supports it, which is Talos Principle, the API actually performs worse than DirectX 11. So that's, that's not that surprising, to be honest, because it's brand new. The game, Talos Principle, has not fully optimized for Vulkan. It wasn't built from the ground up for Vulkan, which certainly is is an inhibitor to performance enhancements with the new API, especially since the game was built on DX11 and 9 even is supported in, in the Talos principle. But going forward, Vulkan should be a pretty interesting API to follow because it does allow developers to get closer to the hardware and that would allow for better overall performance. It removes some of the bottlenecking from the CPU and should be a good complement to DirectX 12 for especially platforms that are not Windows 10. Intel this week also confirmed that its 10 nanometer chips will be coming to market by the second half of 2017. And in that same confirmation, they said that they will not delay past 2017. So that definitely puts a, a bit of a muffle to some of the concerns that 10 nanometer would be further delayed. Certainly a trend that's occurred in fabrication and, and chip making in the past, but Intel is hard set on a delivery of 10 nanometer chips by second half 2017. And for those who don't necessarily know what that means, generally these shrinks and the dye, the fab process, improve things like power efficiency, theoretically improve overall power output in terms of performance, because you can pack more on there. Transistors are smaller, so you can fit more on there. The dye package can remain the same or shrink, depending on what sort of the objective is for that particular architecture. So it's a big deal to move down to 10 nanometers and as Intel continues advancing, as AMD continues advancing, NVIDIA, of course, as well, they are actually going to start encountering issues because the shrinks are now getting to a size, especially around the 8 nanometer point, which is coming up soon, where new fab technology will be required even to start dealing with these chips with the silicon at that sort of ultra microscopic level. So very interesting to follow going forward. But in the meantime, we can expect 10 nanometer chips for the immediate future, and that will hopefully be coming to the normal socketed processors as well. This next news item was a bit of a shocker when I read it. Gigabyte is shipping motherboards for the 990FX series and other AM3 Plus processors. And this is surprising because it's definitely a dated architecture at this point. Zen is sort of right around the corner. The APUs are really the only modern product that AMD is shipping. But Gigabyte has decided to push one last effort of motherboards through the channel as Zen is sort of sitting in the pipes ready to go, or at least preparing to get ready to go. So the new motherboards, they have 990FX and a 970 board. It's 990FX gaming and 970 gaming, sort of sticking with everyone else's branding out there. And all these really do of note is add M.2 slots to the boards, and they also add USB 3.1, neither of which is natively supported on the now aged AMD platform. And that's alongside things like PCIe 3.0. USB 3.0 actually is not natively supported either. There's a lot of stuff that's not natively supported on these 
boards that are on architectures or chipsets from 2011 and even earlier in some instances. So that is the last push probably for the FX series of gaming processors right now in terms of motherboard support. The last news item for the week pertains to FreeSync, which we've seen come up a few times recently in these news recaps, including last week's where we talked about HP's laptops getting AMD FreeSync. In the immediate news item that just happened, AMD has now shipped a Linux driver that will bring FreeSync support to Linux operating systems. AMD's senior software engineer, Harry Wentland, stated that FreeSync support will be coming to AMD's Linux drivers through the AMD GPU DAL driver. And in this note, we saw that other changes included support for six displays in any configuration, including HDMI, DVI, DP, DP, MST, etc. Solid support of 4K at 60 timings on APUs, power features such as clock accurate bandwidth formulas, and improved interaction with power play to maximize power savings and improved audio and other info frame related features. That was all on the list from this new AMD APU and FreeSync driver push, especially as it pertains to Linux. So that is all for the last week in hardware news. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more information. We've got some cool videos coming up, reviews, cases, all that normal stuff. And actually uh, a motherboard issue where there may have been a slight fire. So do check back for that. As always, if you like this coverage, subscribe, hit that Patreon link in the post for video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.